So uh, Korea relations have been interesting this week. There have been actually two stories. Oh, did I not include the other one? So I'm just going to tell the one Korea story as well. Yeah, the Korean drama. I, I always had a policy for a time when it was getting really crazy that I just stopped talking about it because there's nothing really good to talk about. And I know that if you're watching this from Korea, um, you know, of course, all your coverage and perspectives are going to be totally different to mine. And mine are influenced totally by the fact I'm here in Japan and I process media from Japan and, you know, um, as much as I think that the media here is, uh, that I get good information here, um, sure, you know, I've got a perspective that's pro-Japanese, and I acknowledge that, and I, I admit to that before I give my update on this, but um, at the same time, listen, you know, I, I preface this that I think Korea and Japan should, of course, get along, but the fact that at the G7, the Korean president came along, and um, there's still the problems going on with the two, there are two big court cases at the moment in South Korea, where there's one involving the, the workers, the wartime, I'll use the worst terminology for it, just to, just to you know, Make, make it clear I, 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 I'm not being ambiguous about the wrongs that are involved. Um, the sex slaves and the slave laborers. Now, the, the, the slave laborers, the conscripted labor, you know, of course, this happened in many countries. Uh, hey, thanks, Kohosh, you know. Um, but, you know, they were, uh, as well as people in Japan being forced to work in war production factories, people in Korea, which was incorporated into Japan, but they didn't feel like they were Japanese and they were also getting conscripted to go and work in Japanese factories. And those people and their families are still seeking compensation from Japanese companies that are the successor companies of the companies that benefited from the wartime labor. And uh, on those, in the case for the, for the compensation from those companies, uh, the Korean courts, the, the most recent decisions have been that uh, while, while lower courts said, yes, those companies, uh, the Korean government the, the can should um, seize the assets of those Japanese successor companies and, and sell them to pay compensation to Korean war laborers. The, the most recent court uh, decision is that actually the 1965 uh, diplomatic relations treaty between South Korea and Japan, they agreed that individual claims will be expunged and all matters relating to the colonial period and the wartime period between Korea and Japan will be resolved on a country to country basis through the huge um, compensation package that Japan paid as part of the 1965 treaty. Um, i.e. that, uh, and that basically took away the right of individuals to sue Japan or f directly or anything relating to the colonial period and, and that th those matters should be resolved government to government. And what happened was that when the courts said that it would be against public policy to block their lawsuits and they started allowing these things, Japan's protest was, hey, the treaty that establishes the whole basis for our diplomatic relations says that we'll handle this diplomatically, we'll agree on how to handle this, we won't, you know, you won't uh, start taking Japanese companies through the courts. The Korean government said that, no, we have to respect what the courts say. Uh, you know, we're a constitutional democracy. We can't overrule our courts. So we're sorry, you're just going to have to suck it up. So in a way, the, the recent court decision affirming the 1965 treaty kind of brought sanity back because Japan was like ready to pull out like all Japanese business and ties from South Korea over this because, you know, it's like, how can they do business over there if they if, if, if they thought they were operating there free of risk of litigation for this? And now they are. The other one, of course, is the sex slave, the comfort woman uh, case, which also had a finding uh, this week where the, the, in that case, they, the, the courts are inclined still to hold the Japanese government, not companies directly liable. And actually, the, 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 I believe the District Court of Seoul actually uh, put a request to the Japanese government from the, the District Court of Seoul saying, um, yeah, Japanese government, we'd like you to provide us with a list of all of your assets in Korea so that we can prepare to confiscate them and sell them as uh, compensation for the comfort woman. Japan government has the same position on that as well, that through the, well, based on the 65 treaty, it has to be sorted out government to government. And Japan three times has done deals with the South Korean government to arrange compensation to be paid to the comfort woman. And every time the South Koreans change their minds after doing the deal, including the last deal, which they agreed would be the final solution which is a terrible way of describing it, but the final, you know, <laughs> the final resolution of the problem, um, and that, that president who did that was very unpopular for it, and the next government disowned it, but from the Japanese government perspective, it was like the third time they'd resolved it, and now they're getting sued in the courts for over it again. And again, so the Japanese government's just like, you know, you, you guys are crazy, and this is partly why when the um, Korean president was sitting next to the Japanese prime minister at the G7, uh, they tried, the, the Koreans wanted to set up a, a, a discussion between the two presidents, the president and the prime minister, and the prime minister said, no way, Jose, we have nothing to talk about. And the Koreans responded, apparently this is actually an annual thing, though. in fact, I think they even do this twice a year. You know, again, the Americans want South Korea and Japan to get along because, um, you know, South Korea and Japan are both American allies. They are both strong militaries. They both have the same enemies of China, Russia, North Korea. 
um, and they're both democracies and so on. And America wants them both to cooperate with U.S. forces for defending the entire region. The problem is, is that um, every year, twice a year, South Korean military holds um, defense drills around uh, what they call Dokdo Island, what Japan calls Takeshima Islands. Uh, preparing war games for uh, fighting a war against Japan twice a year the South Korean government they're surrounded by North Korea China and Russia and yet twice a year their military prepares for war with Japan uh, on the basis that 1953 the Koreans took these islands which they believe are historically theirs but were being occupied by Japan at the time after World War II the Americans uh, designated that these were Japanese territory but while Japan was disarmed and as soon as GHQ pulled out the moment they pulled out the Koreans took over the islands by force and actually shot and killed a whole bunch of Japanese fishermen from Shimano Prefecture and so on around. Like 150 fishermen have been killed by Korean Coast Guard and military around these islands. So for the Japanese, they they um, the Koreans are upset that the Japanese won't relinquish their claim to the island, which the, the, to, from the Japanese perspective, these islands were stolen and people were murdered. And, you know, um, uh, so no, Japan doesn't have plans to invade the islands or take them back. I mean, they're just a bunch of rocks. It's kind of stupid. It's just a national symbol for the Koreans. But, but at the same time, they're not going to acquiesce to the whole thing because people died over it. And from their perspective, the Koreans just stole them, which is, by the way, the same perspective that the Koreans have that the Japanese did in 1904. So every, everyone's looking at each other badly on this. But the fact that, you know, amidst all of these problems, Korea is still carrying out annual war games, preparing for war with Japan. Well, Japan just totally doesn't give a shit and is just looking across like, what's, what's your problem? <laughs> This is why things will never get better, unfortunately, you know, and I really wish that they would. I wish there was a way for it to happen, but it can't, you know, and the problem is if the South Korean government does want to improve things with Japan, uh, it'll happen just like with Park, you know, they'll end up in jail. Um, they'll, it'll actually be political suicide, which in Korea can act, mean actual suicide. I mean, look at President Roe, you know, the, the, basically every single prime minister president lee did a deal with japan ended up in jail park did a deal with japan ended up in jail Ro didn't do a deal with japan but he killed himself so i guess he never got around to it i mean you know every president there ends up like this so i don't talk about korea <laughs> I, I look i like bts uh you know great food better, better food than japanese food if you ask me uh you know uh what, love traveling there love the people love the culture um, but nothing, nothing going to happen there in terms of relations with Japan.